Welcome back to another edition of Strawman Trust Productions. I am your host, Johnny Strawman, and it is Tell All Tuesday. Now, the first question is from Nick Stewart. Nick, I appreciate you asking the question. I appreciate you participating in the program. Let me just get back. Let me just get down to brass tacks and not draw this out. This is actually a pretty easily answered question. How do you buy or remove your straw man? Let me just say this. You have to take control of your straw man. You can't really buy it. You can't really remove it. Uh, at the end of the day, there's always going to be that SESTK trust is going to exist one way or another. The best thing to do is to, is to rescind any type of powers of attorney, any type, types of uh, fiduciary authorities you've given other people, whether it's SSI, whether it's anyone, it doesn't matter. It's the state, it's a uh, driver license, it's a uh, uh, public library card, anything. You have to take all that back and say that they no longer have permission or authority to use the SESTK trust. And then you basically take control of it. You don't, uh, you don't take control of the SESTK trust specifically. You stop them from using that anymore. And you can use your bond, which if you are able to secure your straw man, not remove it or buy it, but secure it by placing a lien against it, then you can access your trust account through your bond to offset credits. That's it. It's discharged. HJR 192. Remember, the answer is in HJR 192 with respect to what you can do. Okay. HJR 192 says you can discharge debts, says that it's against public policy to pay debts. The reason they say that is because HJR 192 abrogated the gold clause. The gold clause is at Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution. It says essentially that gold and silver are the only lawful money of account. And what they did is they took that money of account away which means you can't pay debts. You can't use gold or silver to pay debt. They didn't amend the constitution. They didn't have a quorum. They didn't have anything that would authorize them to take the gold clause out of the constitution, period. You can't abrogate it lawfully. You can't. They did in 1933 and it stands to this day in 1996. Uh, I forget the guy's name off the top of my head, but I can look it up. But uh, one of the uh, congressmen from Ohio, incidentally, uh, I say incidentally because also it was James A. Trafficant, as a matter of fact. It was Senator, it was a uh, Congressman James A. Trafficant in 1996. The reason I said it was interesting though is because a guy who opposed the Federal Reserve System, uh, I think he probably would have opposed, but opposed HR 192, was a congressman from Ohio as well. Uh, but James A. Trafficant talked about HR 192 in 1996 and mentioned uh, and proposed rescinding HDR 192. There's many people that say HDR 192 is, you know, doesn't apply or it's this, it's old, it's outdated. And if that was true, then in 1996, James A. Trafficant would not have tried to get them to rescind it. The banking emergency still exists. It has the whole time. We're still under martial law. People say, oh, why aren't there cops in the streets? That's martial rule. Again, go to James, uh, go to Jim Marr. Jim Marr is a well-respected individual who has written many books about the conspiracy that happened in this, in this United States and with this government. And if anybody wants to try to discredit him, just think that, he, that his theories are so big that the movie JFK was based upon his book, Crossfire. The JFK with Kevin Costner. If you haven't seen it, you need to. It's got JFK. I mean, it's got Joe, Kevin Costner, Joe Pesci, John Candy, a bunch of guys. It was made a long time ago. Okay. And it really is a serious depiction accurate depiction of what actually happened with JFK and his assassination. Okay. That's Jim Mars. All right. So you might want to check it out. At the end of the day, we are still under martial law. Martial rule is where the cops are in the street. Martial rule means the military on the streets populating the cities. Martial law means that the constitution has been rescinded, that we're basically under curfew. And while we can go out at night and things like that, we can still be restricted. Our movements are restricted. Our modes of conveyance are registered. That's all along the same lines. It's all literally HDR 192 gave them the power to do that. Okay. To hypothecate our property. Okay. To let you keep it in your possession, but put it out on loan as collateral to the federal reserve system to accumulate money and to print money and then say that you owe the money and they're using it for whatever they want and you owe the money. Okay. I mean, it generally is around 40,000, you know, I would say between probably like 35,000 and 75,000 per head every single time they pass a bill. It matters how much they pass, but generally on how much they've been passing lately, you're looking at about 40,000 that you owe for each bill that comes across and plus your children, your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister, your mother, your cousin, everyone at infinitum forever. Okay. Keep that in mind. So what you can do is you can file a lien first in time, first in line, first in time. That means that you 
you are putting out there that you own or that rather that you are uh, um, the controller of your straw man. You're going to do a security agreement. There's five documents you're going to do. I've actually said this. It's on my page before, but I'll answer it every time. I, it doesn't really matter to me. I'm here to do the feature. You're probably new to my page. You're going to need a security agreement. Okay. These are the five documents you need to secure your straw man to, to become a secured party creditor. A security agreement. A Schedule A. Okay, a Schedule A, a hold harmless and indemnity agreement. I'm just going to put hold harmless. I don't want to run out of time. Instagram normally only gives me about eight minutes with my videos. Hold harmless. Uh, let's see, a power of attorney. And a, com and a copyright notice. It could be a common law copyright. It could be an international copyright. Um, it just cannot be a Library of Congress copyright or any other government that owns the copyrights. It can't be that, otherwise they own it just like your vehicle, your mode of conveyance, whatever you call it, your car, your truck, your house, anything you got, if you register it, it now has been hypothecated to the Federal Reserve and it's owned de facto by the United States Corporation, make no mistake. So you need these five documents. The security agreement secures your assets says that the says that your straw man's assets belong to you that you have perfected lien rights against it so if anybody else comes think about the concept of that if anybody else comes and puts a lien on you for some reason you've already beat them to the punch think about it if i was going to come and put a mechanics lien on you i fixed your uh mode of conveyance change the starter on it you don't pay me i come and try to put a lien on you but hospice already has a five hundred thousand dollar lien on all your stuff okay because they helped you Take care of your sick, sick grandmother, unfortunately, when she passed, right? Theoretically speaking, hospice has $500,000 leaned against your property. Guess what? My 800 is getting nothing because they already have the rights. There's nothing left to get. And that's what you're doing with your security agreement is you're securing everything. You're letting it be known that there's nothing else to get. Priority perfected lien. This is the most important one because that secures everything. The Schedule A adds things to it, such as your, you know, your birth certificate, your, your library cards, your driver's license, all those extra um, uh, legal nexuses that you want to you want to get uh, erased and get unattached from. That Schedule A is going to help you do that. The hold harmless is saying that no matter what happens, the straw man is responsible, and you are not. It's indemnifying you from liability. And a power of attorney gives you the ability to be the agent, authorized representative, attorney in fact, not a lawyer, not an attorney, attorney in fact of your straw man, which means that you have the rightful power and authority to act in behalf of your straw man. And the copyright copyrights your name. And what does that do? It makes you the owner of your name. So if I come out and try to present you with bills, all you have to do is let me know that you your name is copyrighted property. That if I continue to try to talk to you, communicate with you, I'm going to incur penalties, 15000 per offense, depending on what you write up in your fee schedule. And that's the long and short of it. That's going to create a that's going to create uh, you as a secured party. And then after you perfect those five documents and you file a UCC one with the secretary of state, you're going to do a chargeback and that's going to make you the creditor, give you the bond that you can use to discharge debts. That's the long and short of it. Hopefully this gets completely posted. I went over my time, but either way, I appreciate your participation. In the meantime, stay tuned, stay sovereign and do not consent.